Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Monday, July 24th, 2017, and you're tuned in to episode 294 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day is a piece published in The Hill that warns of a Department of Justice crackdown on marijuana users, cultivators, processors, and dispensers expected to land sometime this week. Like a rumbling volcano warning of an impending eruption, U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has, in recent weeks, been ramping up calls to pick back up a bevy of discredited and discarded 80 style drug war tactics like civil assets forfeiture, mandatory minimum sentencing, and the D.A.R.E. program. As The Hill is reporting, a task force formed by President Trump that's led by Attorney General Sessions is expected to release a report this week that could attempt to link marijuana with violent crime while calling for stricter sentencing for those caught using, growing, and distributing it. This is a good one to click over for the full read. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. Yesterday, Hawaii Senator Brian Schatz tweeted in response to the expected Department of Justice marijuana crackdown by saying that Attorney General Sessions was, quote, reversing eight years of progress towards a more humane, less expensive, more just system, unquote. The Democratic senator also tweeted while referring to the expected crackdown, quote, this is backward and inhumane. I hope every third party voting progressive remembers this. There's a real difference between R's and D's. Unquote. I think this is a good reminder of how much is lined up against Jeff Sessions in his quixotic fight against legal cannabis. While he certainly wields enormous power as the top law enforcement official in the country, and I certainly don't mean to downplay how dangerous he is to our cause, at the same time, there are a lot more people on the side of sensible marijuana policy reform, and some of them are U.S. senators. And in the case of U.S. Senator and state's rights supporter Rand Paul, some of them even have R's listed after their name. Mary Jane has a good piece pulling together details about the recent secret meeting held between federal and Colorado state government officials regarding the state's legalization of adult use in medical marijuana. The meeting is thought to be a possible precursor to the aforementioned Department of Justice crackdown, but an interview published in The Cannabis with Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper's chief marijuana advisor who attended the secret meeting suggests that the feds were there at the invitation of the governor to learn more about how they were handling legalization. Another interesting fact that emerged late last week was that a Justice Department official leading up a review of state legal marijuana was in attendance as well as the fact that the feds haven't yet reached out to either Oregon or Washington, which also have long-running adult use markets, to repeat their visits there. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out on headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Extractioneering, makers of some of the best legal cannabis concentrates and extracts that you will find anywhere. Extractioneering's lead brain, Dr. Dan Hayden, is a PhD biochemist who knows as much about the basic chemistry of cannabis as he does about growing it. And let me tell you, he knows tons about both. With decades under his belt in both professional biochemistry labs as well as in legal marijuana grow facilities, Dr. Dan provides extractioneering with the solid base of knowledge with which it experimentally crafts its concentrates and extracts. When you get extractioneering products, you know you're getting the best with all of the good stuff that you want and none of the bad. Learn more about how extractioneering works its scientific magic and see video and images of their work yourself over at extractioneering.com, which is spelled like engineering but with the word extraction. That's extractioneering.com. All right, time for the Blitz. Last week, the National Institute on Drug Abuse issued a request for proposal for an app to detect whether someone is too high on marijuana to drive. Regular listeners know that this is a hugely complicated issue, with there being no technology available yet that can accurately assess whether someone is too high to drive. Marijuana is hugely different in how it works than alcohol, which can be easily quantized as to its current levels within a person's body, as well as how those levels correspond to being too intoxicated to drive. We have neither of those things when it comes to cannabis. The RFP issued by the NIDA last week calls for the creation of an app that can use the iPhone's built-in sensors, as well as its ability to handle plug-in external hardware, to craft an app that police and other law enforcement officials can use to bust drivers for driving too high. 
Swing over to Time Angel's piece on Mass Roots for all the details on this one. We swing out west to California, where the state is in the process of converting its long-standing illicit and gray market marijuana systems into a new fully legal regulated industry. One of the challenges a lot of local governments are dealing with is bringing marijuana cultivators into the legal fold. As the Press Democrat is reporting, while the conversion from less than legal to fully legal has been going fairly well in some parts of the state, with thousands of cultivator applicants filing in Humboldt and Mendocino counties, in Sonoma County, just 18 have stepped up as cultivator applicants out of an estimated 5,000. With costs and a hesitancy to embrace the hassles of maintaining compliance with laws being the most cited reasons for cultivators to opt out. This is a good one to click over for the full nuanced read. Wisconsin Governor and Republican Scott Walker perfectly summed up the thin veneer of respectability that comes with donating lobbying dollars to politicians when he defended his acceptance of $25,000 in money donated by the National Cannabis Industry Association, while also calling fair welfare recipients to be drug tested. Governor Walker said, quote, If you look at that dollar amount versus the tens of millions of dollars we've raised, I doubt that it has any more influence. Unquote. Thanks for letting us know how it all really works, Governor Walker. Keeping on the train of bad government officials, we have EPA Administrator and Enemy of the Environment Scott Pruitt announcing that his department, which he is on the record of being in favor of destroying, will automatically turn down all requests made to license pesticides for use in growing cannabis. The denial came in response to a request by California, Washington, Nevada, and Vermont to register new pesticides developed by a subsidiary of Scott's miracle Grow, which regular listeners know has been making a big push into cannabis cultivation. In his letter turning down the four states, Pruitt said that since marijuana was federally illegal, his hands were tied. Turning up north to my neck of the woods here in Maine, we have disgraced Governor Paul LePage saying that he would veto any legislation crossing his desk that taxes adult use marijuana sales without also taxing medical sales. The governor made his comments during a speech given at a local Rotary Club meeting and warned that he wanted Maine to avoid making the same mistake Colorado did, where he said that everyone is a medical user, despite the fact that that's not remotely true. Newly appointed White House Press Secretary Anthony the Mooch Scaramucci, who's been tapped by President Vladimir Trump to replace Sean Spicer, once tweeted that legal marijuana was creating a, quote, zombie apocalypse, unquote, in Washington state. While there's plenty of reasons to question the judgment of anyone who chooses to work for Donald Trump, this is a good discreet example of his lack of critical thinking skills. Watch out for this one. And finally for today, yesterday a new set of marketing regulations went into effect in Washington state that dictates how legal marijuana businesses can advertise to their customers. For one, dispensaries are barred from employing sign spinners to creatively toss signs outside their shops, and any use of designs that could appeal to children are forbidden. Advertising on cars or trucks are also not allowed under the new guidelines, as is marketing to people outside the state. Swing over to the Kitsap Sun for the full read on this one. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, Extractioneering, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the Patreon listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.